Our world is changing fast. And with this comes the need to keep pace. To create, evolve, and deliver solutions that meet our customers' needs and improve their lives. At Swift, we're collaborating with the brightest minds to make transactions faster, smarter, better. Because we believe some challenges are meant to be solved together. With our community, we're reimagining what we can achieve through innovation. Investing in a new AI platform that will power the creation of smarter solutions. Like real-time anomaly detection to validate transactions before they're sent. We're reaching into the world of central bank digital currencies to reduce fragmentation, connect up technologies, and enable new possibilities for sending digital money across borders. And we're guiding securities players through the emerging world of tokenized assets, increasing the speed and efficiency of post-trade processing to help a new market grow. These innovations will help our community adapt to finance's ebbs and flows, not just to stay afloat, but to thrive and lead both today and in the future. But we're not embarking on this journey alone. We're encouraging our community to join us too, to innovate with us, and be part of shaping the future of finance. Faster. Smarter. Better. Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the 10th edition of Inside Innovation Live, our series of shows that explore the exciting innovations happening across financial services. I'm Nick Kerrigan, Head of Innovation at Swift, and I can't believe that we've reached the 10th episode of this series. And so today we've got a very special show to look forward to, covering everything innovation at Cybos this year. And to help me cover this, I'm very delighted to be joined by the renowned writer and futurist, Jennifer Sertle, and Swift's very own head of Innertribe and Discover, Ines McLeod. Welcome both to the show. This is exciting. Thanks for having us. It's very cool. It's very cool. So uh, to get going, um, Jennifer, could you share a little bit about your background and, and work and why you get involved with Innertribe? Absolutely. Um, so it's um, so for all of you that are on this call, I'm sure there's a lot of people that we know and people that we can't wait to meet in Toronto. Um, my first introduction in InnoTribe was in 2012, um, where I was a speaker based on the book Strategy, Leadership and the Soul. And I've been part of the community. I think what, what I want to really support is the cognition. We have four generations in the workplace right now, and there's such a focus on technology and uh, new applications, interoperability. And I, I still want to say that people still have to think together, they still have to work together, and it's really about insight and data, not just data. So that's what I hope to contribute, um, being part of this community and part of this conversation today. Very cool, very cool. Well, um, Inez, you've been leading Swift Owner Tribe and the Discover Zone for a number of years now. Um, what's the concept all about and how has it evolved? Yeah, thanks, Nick, and thanks, thanks for having us. Um, so Discover is basically made up of three main parts. Uh, you have the Discover exhibition, which is uh, all of our fintechs that group together to come and exhibit at Cybos. You have the Discover stage, which is a platform that gives a voice to those fintech exhibitors. And then you have what's very, very close to my heart. You have Swift Inner Tribe. Swift Inner Tribe, a conference within a conference. We have the fun job of leaping 15, 20 years into the future, taking out our crystal ball, reflecting on what technology and society kind of looks like, looking back at the uh, challenges and opportunities to, to, that, that, that lead us up to that potential digital future. So yeah, we have, we have a, a, a really fun job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you could say you have, a, you have an awesome job, right? And um, 
Thank you so much for coming on, uh, coming on today. A very warm welcome to you, to you both. Um, before we get into the the, the details, um, I did want to acknowledge and 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 say it's great to see so many of you um, already joining us today on the LinkedIn Live uh, stream. Um, feel free to ask questions in the stream, and we'll try to answer them uh, as many uh, as many of them as possible. Um, we will have the discussion, and then we'll get to the Q and A as, as we usually do. So um, I wanted to set the scene uh, before we go into, into uh, innovation uh, at Cybos and Innotrife specifically uh, to think about how innovation is, is, is evolving globally uh, and to sort of think about the trends that have been particularly prominent uh, since we all came together in uh, Cybos in Amsterdam, uh, you know, just under a year ago now. So maybe if I could start with you, Jennifer. Um, what, what kind of financial innovations have you seen emerge over the last year and what's become more prominent? I, I think that, you know, with a de it's almost like um, it comes with the word decentralized and distributed and then it becomes manifest in all the different applications that are there. I think the most exciting thing is for startups and the idea that uh, their ability to get access to understand capital and currency, I think, has, has been increasing. And I think that the new applications that are coming out are really, really helping expedite resources to the people that really need them most. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, Inez, in terms of that, that, that framing then, how do you think that then gets uh, reflected in terms of, the, of what we see uh, in terms of innovation topics at Cybos? Yeah, well, obviously we run the full gamut of topics, everything to do with technology and society, but there's a couple I think that are really interesting that we're going to be looking at this year. Um, now, Intertribe has always been known as uh, part of the conference that is very future looking, um, and we tended to speak about subjects that would then become mainstream sort of, you know, four or five years later. That gap between what we talk about and that becoming mainstream We've noticed that becoming significantly smaller over the last three to five years. But two, two topics in particular that really piqued our interest, um, because the fundamental shifts and the changes that have happened over the last 12 to 24 months in these spaces allow us to take a fresh perspective. The first one is AI. Everybody's talking about yeah. it. And I think, you know, a few years ago, no one would have guessed that we would be where we are right now. So that allows us to actually look at the future from a new place. Because what we thought was going to be the future as far as AI was concerned, you know, a few years ago, it now looks very, very different. So mm. you'll see that AI is going to be across the conference and also, you know, um, in, on, on the inner tribe stage for sure. The other thing is is digital currencies. Uh, and, mm. and Jennifer mentioned the whole, you know, distributed, distributed finance and decentralization. I think what's really interesting about digital currencies is, you know, we looked a few years ago and it was all about cryptocurrencies. It was all about DeFi. It's yeah. all about Web3. It's all about, you know, uh, finance for the masses. And actually what's happened uh, over the last 12 to 24 months is, is, to a certain extent, the incumbents have taken the lead with, mm. with stable coins and CBDCs. And that seems to be what's pushing the agenda a little bit forwards within the financial industry. So two topics that I think will be uh, running across the conference. Yeah. That's that's great. That's great. And and that point you made in is about actually, you know, the, the the speed of movement of topics from from InnoTribe into the main conference is absolutely something that uh, you know that I've I've seen too. And and particularly in that digital currency space where you know the central banks have kind of driven that agenda. And it, you know we were talking about new forms of money in InnoTribe, and suddenly you know uh, CBDCs in front of uh, and, and AI as well front and center in the in the across the conference uh, this year. And, and of course, I mean, Cybos is is kind of a unique forum that does closely reflect the latest trends and technologies. And I think we, you know, we, me, and it is in particular have taken a kind of, uh, a, a, you know, a stance in terms of trying to increase that those sort of uh, the visibility of those topics in the Cybos agenda over the last uh, the the last the last few years. So, um, Jennifer, what what are you most excited to hear about? in Toronto. Is there a particular speaker you want to hear from? Is there a yeah. theme you want to hear about? Well, also, um, what I also want to share to you is that the vantage point that I have is I'm a creative and a part of in a tribe, but I'm not actually in the community as pervasive as other people. So I get to kind of come in, come out, come in and see the transition. And in addition to the speed of adoption that Inna's talked about, um, I remember the first uh, part of in a tribe, um, you know, we were in Osaka and we were in a, a room that maybe had 100 people mm -hmm. and 
um, to see over time the fact that we were able to get onto the main stage. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that's listening that's trying to create innovation within your own culture, um, what InnoTribe has always done a great job of is cross-pollination and getting naive experts and creatives on the stage. And I think that um, that a lot of people try and focus on, on the topic and that people have to be inspired. And mm. it's amazing how yeah. a new idea from someone that is actually doing wearables in a totally different or like, um, I'm just thinking of um, Imogen Heap who has those wonderful Moo Moo gloves. And, and the idea that someone like that can come in and inspire people that are solving problems in finance is a point I really, really want to to kind of put on the stage. Of course, everything in uh, InnoTribe is going to be amazing. I did want to um, share with you a couple of programs that I'm going to be a part of, or not a part of, but I can't wait to go to. Um, one of them is, uh, of course, the idea about the hype in AI. And the reason mm. I'm going to that isn't so much that it's about AI, but two of the speakers actually have been very involved in the world of digital ethics mm. and information ethics. And mm -hmm. so I, I really am excited to have people talking about ethics and, you know, language learning models. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things mm -hmm. I'm excited about. Um, there's also the Springboard for Innovation with ISO. And, mm -hmm. you know, people think about, um, and that's on um, September 20th at nine o'clock. Um, and for a lot of people that are, you know, doing systems about ISO, the idea that um, these systems aren't just about efficiency, they're also about innovation, I think is really, really excited. And then the one thing that I'm really excited about that is within InnoTribe um, also happens on Wednesday, and it's the, the future of value with, um, with uh, Letty Glyptis, uh, Robert Grant, Sigourney Naz Nazarov, and uh, Lena Swartz. And so those are like the three that no matter what else is going on in my life, I'm going to be there. And I hope to see some of you. And if you actually are on this call with us today and go to those sessions, please just shake my hand and say hello. Very cool. Very cool. Well, absolutely. I mean, the future of value and as we'll hear a bit from Inez back to the yeah. future of money is going to be really critical sessions this year. Thank you for the plug for the uh, the ISO innovation one. Um, my colleague, uh, Rachel Levy, is running that one. And Perfect. I think that'll be a particularly, uh, particularly fascinating one. And then Inez, I know you've always been kind of passionate about bringing inspiration from outside of financial services through the Inno Tribe kind of agenda and getting us to kind of think differently about how we might develop kind of experiences and money and payments and use them in different ways. Uh, and uh, so I guess, is that the type of thing that you're also looking out for at Cybos this year? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And, and firstly, thanks very much to Jennifer for, for, for giving us the, the big shout out to, to some of the cool stuff that's happening in Inner Tribe this year. But yeah, absolutely. You know, with Inner Tribe, the way that we frame a lot of the, the sessions and the way that we explain it to people is when people come to an Inner Tribe session, we look to, you know, inspire them, inform them, educate them, give them knowledge. But they often come with questions. Um, and the way that we look at it is if they leave with more questions, but better questions, mm. then we've done exactly what we've set out to do. And we find a lot of the time that can actually come from, from industries that have absolutely nothing to do with finance. And if you look at some of our opening speakers over the, over the last five, six years, very much so completely different. And this year is no different, right? So if we look at 2019, we had Professor Brian Cox, we've had mm. uh, Dr. Kaku, we've had Mick Ebeling, people that are doing stuff that is absolutely amazing and inspirational, but actually have nothing to do with finance. And yet there's a carryover of things yeah. that we can learn about. But I think there's one topic that we haven't mentioned yet, which is probably for me one of the most important topics at Cybos, certainly last year and definitely this year, and that's sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, and sustainability, you're going to see it across across the whole thing. And then it's we look at it not only from the way that we build Cybos as an event, so the physical side, the exhibition mm -hmm. side, the way that we construct and use materials and handle waste and use local food and all of that kind of stuff, but also in the content. And we'll be looking at sustainability from. 500 different angles across the conference. Um, looking at ESG, what that means, is it fit for purpose? What's the next step in that? You know, demystifying carbon credits um, and really and really looking into the heart of sustainability. So that, that's a topic that I'm, I'm really excited about this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool and absolutely extremely, extremely topical. And uh, I think it's actually, you know, seeing, for example, the Cybos kind of sustainability pledge kind of piece, right, coming together with the 
with the content is is pretty it's pretty neat and kind of shows how we try and embody those those kind of themes. Yeah, very much so. And maybe I can I can you know flip the tables <laughs> a little bit on you. What about what about you? What what are the sessions and and speakers that you're really eager to see? <laughs> Thank you, Ed. As I get put on the spots, right? Um, I, I mean. For me, what what I what I think is 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 particularly exciting is that you can see innovation topics across all the many streams uh, of of Cybos uh, this year. So, uh, for example, um, just picking one out that we've been involved in quite a lot, we have a big issue debate coming up on on technology uh, and data intelligence, mm. and that's a pretty um, I think a crucial topic at the at the moment, particularly with the with the prominence of AI, but then also the importance of data to actually enable AI. So we've got uh, we've got uh, BNP, BNY Mellon, NPP from Australia, and uh, Mark Gould, uh, Chief Payments Executive from the Federal Reserve, on, on that big issue debate. So uh, I'm I'm very keen to see how how that one that one turns out. Then if we look at the kind of the industry panels track, uh, we've got some really strong, uh, strong ones on central bank digital currencies, tokenization um, and AI. And we then take those themes into the Swift uh, uh, Cybos stream where we can actually talk about some of the things that we've uh, we, we, we've been doing collaboratively together with the uh, with with the industry. So. For example, um, we last week uh, released the results of our blockchain interoperability experiment. So we've got a Swift at Cybos session that will delve deeper into that and allow people to hear a bit more about about what we've what we've been doing uh, uh, there. So I guess it's it's hard to pick out all any few sessions, but I think you know, in as I'm looking forward to seeing innovation everywhere across Cybos. Um, so, so with that, maybe we should uh, we should then delve a little bit into into InnoTribe, right? Um, and um, maybe in a, so you could go a little bit deeper in talking about some of the themes that you really wanted to bring out in InnoTribe uh, this year. And I think you've also kind of themed it around from the, the sort of days of Cybos, if you like, um, and 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 how that progresses as, as a journey across the days. So. Um, maybe you could share some of those, some of those kind of. Thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nick. Um, so indeed, we've previously we've we've actually looked at topics and kind of limited, you know, topics to certain days. Like if we if we think of 2018 and Sydney, we had a, a full day on quantum back to back sessions, which was you know stunning room only. It was absolutely fantastic. This year, we've taken a slightly different approach in that we. Yeah, we've got a grouping of kind of big topics uh, that are on the agenda that, that run across the four days. And, and we're talking about stuff like um, AI and ML, uh, quantum and, and new technology, uh, digital currencies and new money, um, and sustainability in ESG. So those are, those are things that will run across the week. But we've also looked at it from um, an experiential perspective. So we're actually mm -hmm. grouping every session and we're, we're kind of giving them a rating in four different kind of uh, themes. Yeah. Um, and that's knowledge, insight, wisdom, and impact. And so every one of our sessions will have a different weighting of those four different themes. Some will be really focusing on knowledge uh, and insight. Some will be about delivering impact and things that you can take away and bring back to your own organizations. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're doing things a little bit differently this year, uh, but still lots of exciting things in the program. That's that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. And I bet you've got some exciting plans, pl things lined up for the opening and closing. Well, uh, without giving secrets away, Inez, what can you share on that? Well, you know, it wouldn't be in Inner Tribe if we didn't do something slightly crazy. Um, so firstly, I think, you know, as I mentioned before, we always like to do something inspirational from someone from outside of the industry to kind of kick the week off. And this, this year is no different. We're, we're very privileged to have Jessica Holmes will be joining us. Jessica mm -hmm. is a uh, Canadian comedian uh, who struggled with uh, depression. And she's going to come uh, and deliver an insightful keynote on mental health, mental well-being, tips and tricks, you know, the questions that we should be asking ourselves to see if we're okay. Uh, an incredibly important topic, both for our industry mm -hmm. and society in general. And one that I think that we've, we've been able to be a lot more open about over the last few years. So it's a really great way to kind of kick off the week and set the scene. For the closing, um, yeah, everything that you've wanted to know about uh, predictability, explainability, artificial intelligence, and ethics um, done with uh, an amazing moderator, Julia Street. Mm -hmm. Except the difference this time is our two speakers are actually going to be AI models themselves. So we'll be uh, having uh, video avatars that will be on screen 
giving their perspectives about AI. Um, we'll be looking at ChatGPT and and Bard by Google, who will be our two speakers. So that's that's going to be a fantastic session. I'm really really looking forward to that. <laughs> so long as you can ask ChatGPT what they what it thinks of Google Bard and vice versa, oh, we, I, oh, we I want to know that answer. We'll be asking some questions that I think most people will not think that we would ask in in this kind of session. So come along to that. It's going to be really exciting. That That's sounds funny. super cool. That's super cool. <laughs> and Jennifer, um, um, the the future of money series has been like the you know one of the kind of you know anchors, if you like, of the Inno Tribe agenda. And I know this year you're going to actually be hosting the final edition of the Future of Money series, uh, which might seem a little bit shocking to some people. So, um, because because we hope the world has not ended. So, um, can you tell us a bit more about that and and how how with how it's thinking about the evolution here of of, of money? Absolutely. I think one of the neatest things, if I think of um, the W's, like um, what we just heard from Innes was the world um, that were like, I heard well-being and I heard wisdom. Right. And um, I think that I just want to because I'm learning this for the first time too, Innes being on this call with you because I didn't know all of the aspects of the agenda. So I'm just kind of processing right now that um, that wellness or well-being rather and wisdom are actually part of the agenda. Um, I think once upon a time, people didn't have money, you know, right? Money, money was a currency. It used to be currency. Why is it named currency? It's because it was about flow and value creation. And the idea that, um, that the top, then it became money, money, and then it became digital money. Um, I really, I love the idea that, that we can, we can honor a body of, of, of learning together and then say, we're moving beyond that. Because the conversation is going more, quantum physics is going more towards really understanding that things are about energy and vibration, right? Mm, mm, and, mm. and so if I think of solid liquid gas, you know, that conversation about money is more of the solid and we want to be more fluid and where we're heading, the conversation of value, but we don't want to go there without really demarking what we've learned so far. You know, as a strategist, I always have four questions. They are, where have you been? What have you learned? where are you going and what is required? Mm -hmm. And I love the idea that I actually get to facilitate and be part of the conversation of where have we been? What have we learned? And then I give the baton to Inez and he takes us where we're going and what's required. That is, that is very, very cool. And I, I also love the idea of actually reflecting back on the journey of the discourse around money right mm -hmm. and what have we talked about and and uh, you know uh, and it's always good to reflect on what did you, what did we predict and what completely happened that took us you know completely by surprise um and so now you know moving that series from the future of money to the future of value i think is going to be is going to be really uh really impactful and take us maybe in a in some different uh, in different directions um I, in is the future of value what what are you hoping to see out of that well i mean it's going to be our flagship as we as we as we move forwards into into 20 24 25 and beyond right. um, i think the, the the discussion about the, the future of money uh, we we've done it from so many different perspectives that that when we look at value in the future it's it's so much more than just the, the currency aspect of it um, and there's so many different ways that you can look at it right it's it's, you can look at it from the point of view of society as a whole. You can look at it from the point of view of, of trust and identity, security, personal data. Uh, what does that actually mean? And what is value in the future? Um, so, yeah, we can go the utopian or the dystopian way. And, and we could be saying something like, you know, there's only going to be pockets of, of human beings on, on a few locations across the world. And actually, the future of value is who has clean air, and who has water, mm -hmm. uh, and who, who has food. Um, but yeah. you can also take it to the utopian extreme, which is we've conquered the, the, the climate change thing. We've been able to develop a way of society, to, you know, uh, to, to evolve to the point where we think we could potentially go. So what does that digital future look like? So it's mm -hmm. a really, really great exciting question. way of looking at value from a different perspective. Yeah, great question. Great, 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 great question. And I think it opens up so many more possibilities, which is actually how everybody's starting to think about this, right? What could be encapsulated in value so much more than the, 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 than the concept of money? 
Um, I also am um, noting in as there are a number of um, sense maker sessions planned on the agenda, and I know you've got me doing one of those. Um, so I wonder if you wanted to share with the audience what, what, what the what the plan for those the, those those was and what they'll get out of those. Yeah, sure. Um, so the sense makers we did them before, and we partnered with IBM Research. And they're all about taking complex and sometimes quite abstract topics, breaking them down into understandable chunks, and giving people you know takeaways that they can really. Uh, ask more questions about it. So it's, it's that asking those better questions. Um, but it'd be able to leave one of these sessions and say, actually, I didn't think of it from that perspective. And here's something that I can take back into my organization and actually learn and put into practice. Um, so that's what the sense makers are all about. And we've got one uh, yourself uh, on, on CBDCs. It's the first time that we've actually got swift, specific content on the inner tribe stage, which I think is, is quite exciting. And we're looking at CBDCs, but we're also looking at AI and federated AI. The two other ones, I think, are, are really exciting. So we have the future mm. of marketing, something that we've never mm. done before. Mm. Marketing is evolving into something completely different. And we're looking at it being integrated into the way that we develop products for the, trying to meet the needs of customers in the future. So I think that's going to be a really exciting one. And also, the last one is, is all about carbon credits and demystifying and what it actually means. Yeah. Because very few people understand what it means and what it could mean. Um, I mean, you know, people say lots of different things about it and we have greenwashing hair and, and, and all of this, this kind of discourse that's coming out about it. But we've got two experts that are really going to look at it from the supply side and the demand side and kind of unpack that and, and look at what that's going to be uh, looking like in the future. Um, we've also, just to kind of change tack a little bit, we've also got the, uh, the final of the perfect pitch on the Inner yeah. Tribe stage on the Wednesday afternoon. Um, so the focus of the competition this year is divided into three streams. We've got ambitious adventurer, community pioneer, and established trendsetter. So it's fintechs of different shapes and sizes that have gone through an evaluation round. Um, so yeah, really exciting stuff. Now, I mentioned that sustainability is also a key theme for InnoTribe mm -hmm. this year. Um, and I know that that's also something that you guys are looking at because obviously the Swift Hackathon is focusing on ESG, which is also taking place on the InnoTribe stage on the Thursday. So maybe, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure, sure. Ha happy to do so. So, I mean, we always try and select for the hackathon, you know, a, a particularly sort of, you know, relevant and timely topic. And we thought, you know, this year it was really time to do uh, to do ESG and to engage our community on that. So uh, we formed kind of two challenges under that. One is about, you know, how do you better measure the, uh, the impact of, say, a strategic initiative on on ESG and how can you actually how can you measure and assess that? And then the second challenge has been more about how do you ensure that an organization is is in compliance with its ESG um, obligations? Um, as always, what we do, we go out to the SWIFT community, we invite the SWIFT community to come in and, and, and kind of solve that with us. Um, we've had a tremendous response this year. So um, we've had uh, 223 participants uh, with almost 60 teams from 38 companies um, who've been working on these challenges uh, very energetically, very diligently, very creatively um, over the last few few weeks or, or so. Um, and they've now all submitted their uh, their, their uh, their responses. Um, we did a, a very, uh, you know, intensive judging process, and then we'll be uh, announcing the, the winners and runners up on on the Inno uh, Inno Tribe stage. I'm always inspired with the hackathon as to kind of like the range of solutions that people come up with, and the fact that um, you know you have everyone involved in that in that kind of hackathon. So everyone from Swift's largest clients. Uh, through to some extremely large tech companies, through to you know uh, a two-person startup, and everybody is you know uh, everybody is competing and 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 trying to solve the challenge on an equal uh, e equal basis. And and last year, as you, as as in as you might recall, um, uh, yeah, we had we had winners and runners up from from across that that spectrum. So um, so 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 it really is a great uh, is, is a great. Uh, is a great platform and it kind of highlights the creativity that we have uh, we have in the in the Swift uh, uh, community. So, so Ines, if I could turn it back to you, then um, yeah. talking about creativity, I understand there's something called an Inno Tribe Quest that's happening in Toronto. So, what is that? Yeah, so Inno Tribe Quest, it's kind of building on the little pilot that we did last year, and it's all about POAPs, so proof of attendance protocols. Uh, these are basically digital collectibles. Um, the idea behind it this year is it's going to be integrated into the Cybos app. 
Uh, there's going to be three different routes. We have the conference route, the networking route, and the exploration route. Uh, for the conference route, you, you'll be able to attend different sessions on Inotribe and some select innovation sessions. Um, there'll be a QR code that pops up on the screen. You scan the QR code, and you'll be able to collect one of these poems. Um, by collecting multiple different ones in the conference, for example, you'll unlock the conference star. And all of these different collections of perps will allow you to actually uh, claim some rewards and benefits from reductions uh, for attractions across Toronto to mini TP blankets to hoodies, uh, all the way up to some of our top prizes, which are uh, Google Pixel uh, Pro, uh, Microsoft Surface Tablet, and a full week pass for Southwest Beijing in 2024. So there's the conference Yay. route, there's the networking <laughs> route, where you can visit different networking events. There's the exploration route, which is all about tapping your phone on these NFC totems, which will be yeah. uh, across the venue in different spaces. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be exciting. Um, so make sure you've got that Cybos app ready and that you sign up to, to, to play the InnoTrack Quest. That, that sounds very cool. And I know I, for one, I'm going to have to stop myself getting completely distracted doing the quest and missing the sessions I should be, I should be doing because it sounds, it sounds, uh, it sounds awesome. Um, we're, we're almost, uh, we're almost uh, kind of at time now. Um, I will get to, to, to one of the questions from the audience in, in a second, but uh, before we finish off, uh, Jennifer, I just wanted to uh, uh, offer you any, uh, any sort of, uh, sort of closing comments, your, your kind of feelings yes. about Cybos for this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do. And thank you for that. Only because I, I all in my community know that I, I love quotes and I love kind of ending events kind of with a quote. And in my preparation for you today, um, I, I know many of you have probably heard this 1999 David Bowie BBC interview oh, is yeah. profound. Yeah. Yes. And the, the sentence um, that I'd like to read is that monopolies do not have a monopoly. I embrace the idea that there's a demystification between the artist and the audience. Now it is subgroups and community. What is new is the construction between the audience and the performer. The audience is at least as important as the performer. We are now in total fragmentation. And you know, this event we're having, the whole theme is collaborative finance in a fragmented world. And I, I am in support of the idea that InnoTribe is about tribe being people and that no matter how technology transfers, we need each other. And I hope that we go and meet people that can not only hold us accountable, but help us um, adapt to this future that is, um, we've never been here before. And uh, so thank you for having me on this platform. That's that's brilliant, Jennifer. And um, you know that that I remember that that interview was was amazingly insightful and you know uh, underestimated in terms of the the, the future. And I also love the takeaway in terms of Cybos isn't just about the people on stage and the content, but it's about everyone yeah. coming together um, and kind of thinking through these these things, the interactions, the unexpected conversations uh, that that uh, that you have. Um, I'm going to. We're at time, so I'm just going to pick up one question here, which has come through uh, for Inners. Um, so, so AI is clearly a, a is clearly a big trend. Um, where can we expect to hear more about AI across the agenda, and in what kind of kind of forms? In other words, what kind of pieces are going to be picked up? What aspects of AI are going to be picked up? Sure, I think I mean there's so many different ones, and and one of the great things about the new way that we've developed the program on Cybos is that you can you can actually search by specific topics, and and AI is one of them. I think that the highlight that I'd like to make, and it's okay promoting one one of our own sessions on the InnoTribe stage that Jennifer mentioned earlier, um, is contrarian views, mm. um, and the contrarian views session um, is an exciting way of looking at AI. So basically, what we do is we divide it into two teams of two. Um, we set a premise of a particular uh, perspective that we want to take on AI. Um, and one team argues for it, one team argues against. But then halfway through, we switch. And the team that was arguing for then, then has to argue against. Yeah. The team that was arguing against then has to argue mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so much the makeup and the fact that it's a really exciting way of looking at a topic, but it's, it's who we've got on these two teams. So we've got a theologian. We've mm -hmm. got an ethicist. We've got a legal scholar and we've wow. got a technologist. So four very, very different perspectives on AI and the ethical side and implications as a society of the next steps of where this technology is potentially going to go, 
looking at it from those four different perspectives. And I think that that for me, if you've got to attend one AI session, uh, of course, it's going to be on the inner tribe stage. And that would be my recommendation. Very cool. Very cool. I, I can't wait, Ines. I, I shall make that on, definitely make that on, on my agenda. Uh, that is almost all we've got uh, time for today. Um, Ines, I wanted to tell you that Ali Patterson, in response to your inner tribe quest, says he's going to need a fully charged phone. So, um, <laughs> I so I think we're all looking forward to to that. Let the um, quest begin, indeed. Let the quest begin. So, with that, we're going to wrap uh, this conversation today. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Inez, for joining me. That is indeed um, all we all we've got time for. But we will look forward to seeing you all uh, in Cybos in, in Toronto. Um, before we go, um, I just like to remind everyone. Uh, that Cybos registrations are still very much open. Um, you can register for a, an in-person pass or, um, or a digital pass using the QR screen, which you can now see uh, displayed here. So uh, if, you, if you haven't registered yet, get out your phone now, get that QR code and, and come and join us for all the richness that Cybos uh, 2023 in Toronto will be. With that, thank you everyone for joining today. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.